So after reading Lock and Key, I knew that I absolutely had to pick up some of Joe Hill's novels. He has three. He has Horns, Heart Shaped Box, um, and then he has a collection of short stories, 20th Century Ghosts. Oh, but he does have three novels. He has a Nos one. For two or something. I'm, I'm reading it right now. It's like a horror Santa story. But anyway, uh, Heart Shaped Box is something I just finished. It is about an aging rock star named Jude who comes from a broken home, abusive father, kind of like passive mother, that kind of thing. He's in his 50s now. He's sort of a collector of the occult, not by on purpose, but like on accident, because his fans get like so into his stuff, they start sending him like re really weird paraphernalia of like witchcraft and, and, and Satan worshipping type stuff, and so he has a collection. And one day, he his assistant, Danny, gets an email saying, Hey, you are a, you've bought items like this, how about this one? And it's a dead man's suit, and supposedly the seller is selling uh, a ghost, so their stepfather's ghost. So on some random impulse, Jude decides to buy this this suit, and surprise, surprise, there's an actual ghost that accompanies it. Um, I really like this book. I'd give it like a 7 out of 10, and it's the first novel I've read of his besides Lock and Key, which is a graphic novel that I reviewed previously. And he is very, very influenced by his father, undoubtedly. Like, I remember a friend telling me that Joe Hill is like Stephen King 2.0, and I have to agree. The thing I like about Joe Hill versus Stephen King is Joe Hill doesn't meander, which King is kind of known to do. King will go off on like a three-page description of the woods and the house, and I'm just like, okay, okay, I, I get it, it's a house in the woods. Uh, I blew through this really fast. I was like halfway into the novel, and I was like, holy shit, it's halfway into the novel, what's going to happen? So I would say if you like Stephen King, or maybe even if you don't like Stephen King, check out Joe Hill. I think he wrote this before people knew that he was Stephen King's son, um, but you can definitely see very similar vibes from the both of them. Um, the one thing I didn't like, and this is going to be a spoiler, I'm going to tell you a spoiler. I'm spoiling parts of the book, so if you don't want to hear the spoiler, shut it off now, because I'm about to say the spoiler in three seconds, okay? Three, two, one. Here's the spoiler. Don't get mad. What I didn't like about the book is that Jude has two German Shepherds, and he sort of, I don't want to ruin it too much, but they basically end up dying, and Joe Hill doesn't put any character reflection or sadness on Jude's dog dying at all. And they kind of die, like, not not directly protecting him, but on his journey to, like, try to get this ghost to go away. And it's just like, your dog died! And he doesn't, like, the character doesn't even think about them! Like, he doesn't even express one sentence of sadness, you know? And I'm, I've spent 200 pages getting to know these dogs, and I love these dogs. And, and then they die, and Jude's just, Jude just leaves, leaves them. He's like, oh, they're dead. And you're just like, okay. So you don't, you don't give a shit about your dogs? And the way he describes Jude, like, there's like literally one sentence in there where Jude's like, I treat my dogs better than anything in life because I love dogs and they kind of remind me of home. Yet there's all this other stuff devoted to like when Jude kicks the dogs or when the dogs are misbehaving and Joe's like, Jude's like, fucking dogs? And like, there's so much more negative aspect of dogs who are like trying to save his life than there are positive ones. And so I didn't, I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. Me as a reader, I kind of started to hate Jude, the protagonist, and I kind of wanted to be like, fuck you, you can die. Your dog's died. You should die and join them. Um, but the story as a whole was really great. And <laughs> yeah, besides that, and like I'm reading NOS 142 or whatever now, and like it describes a scene where a cat dies, and I'm just like, oh. Like, I honestly don't know how writers can do that, because, like, if I just happened to, like, write, the kitten died, I would be like, oh my god, oh my god, delete, delete, delete. And I get it, I get it, it's fictional, it's, it's not a real dog, it's words on paper, it is a, it is a imaginary scenario. But, you like, it, and me as a reader, it took me out a lot, because it's like, you know, you've raised these dogs since they were puppies, you know them, you love them, they die for you. And then the story just keeps going. Like, he doesn't even shed a single tear. There's not one line of like, oh, I loved that dog. 
Oh, my poor dog. Nothing. It's just the dog died. Then they ran into the house and blah 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 blah. And you're just like, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? But anyway, <laughs> if you want to get our trip box, enjoy. I will put a link down below. Um, you might not want to have sex with it because it's kind of creepy. Creepy, kinky sex.